Hey, today we're going to put on some sequential turn signals. Stay tuned. Let's try the Kenji. So when the uh, Kia EV6 launched about a year and a half ago now, I thought some of the coolest aspects of the design of the car were the rear taillights. The way the light bar went across the top and the way the black chrome went around the bottom of the back of the car and how it kind of like chiseled into negative space around the haunches in the back. I thought that was all awesome. The other thing I thought that was really awesome when I saw videos of the car in B-roll when it was launched were the turn signals, which were actually playfully and skillfully integrated into that black chrome bar so that they didn't seem to be there until they were needed. I thought this was actually pretty awesome. And it mirrors some of the technology I saw that um, Hyundai Kia Genesis doing uh, in other contexts where they had chrome that uh, turned into lights. Unfortunately, when the EV6 came to the United States, those turn signals didn't come with it. The sequential turn signals probably didn't pass the federal regulations for turn signals, which exist to make sure a certain percentage of the light lights up immediately when the uh, person puts on their turn signals. And I guess these uh, couldn't be made to fit within those regulations. But kind of a bummer because uh, in theory, they actually will be safer. Uh, the turn signals are amber, a different color, and are separated from the brake lights. Plus they look cooler. Fortunately, people on the internet and on the EV6 forum who are competent electronics hackers have thought this was a problem as well and have taken up the cause and today we're going to be putting in a custom harness that uh, someone amazingly has come up with on the internet uh, and a pair of the sequential lights that I received from Korea. We're going to take all that stuff together and we're going to put it in my car. This will hopefully serve as a good guide for those considering this upgrade or those like me that purchased it and now need to figure out how to get the thing in their car. This is actually going to be, I think, somewhat of a major install because it requires taking off a fair amount of the trim in the car to be able to run the wire from the front to the back. And it's going to require us to take off these funky uh, turn signals, which are really part of the body of the car, in order to get the thing in uh, and assembled. So with all that as an introduction, let's get going. Okay, so as we get going, I wanted to show you what we're dealing with here. We have a 15 page instruction booklet with all sorts of diagrams. And I'm gonna put this aside. This is gonna be our primary source for what to do here to get this thing in. And then I have the harness itself from him. And uh, this is gonna consist of a harness and some ties and some other awesome stuff that we'll get to in a couple minutes. And then we also have this special uh, pump wedge, uh, <laughs> which are, I've never seen this before, but it's like a super a trim removal tool that helps you uh, wedge into somewhere where you need to separate something uh, that's really uh, kind of attached uh, very strongly together uh, with clips. So this is going to help us uh, get those lights out on the back without hopefully scratching up anything. And then finally, this box is from Korea. And here are the actual turn signals that are sequential. They look right now like they're chrome and they match the rest of the back of my car. But if you actually look closely, they also contain LED lighting in them. And that will light up when I turn on my turn signals after we're done with this whole project. Okay, so those are the materials we have. Let's get started with the install. Okay, it looks like this install is gonna be in four major parts. The first one is gonna be disassembling parts of the trim of the car and the rear taillights, which have to pop out of their position. It's interesting and complex because uh, the rear taillights on one side include the charge port door. So that's gonna come out as part of one unit, it looks like, with a body colored piece and the turn signals all attached as one unit. So first disassembling all that trim is gonna happen, uh, or I'm gonna have to do that. The second is wiring. We're gonna have to grab the turn signal wires from the front of the car underneath the driver's footwell and then run that wire through to the back 
uh, to wire it up to the new tail lights. The third is we're going to have to put those new tail lights, install them into that module that we took out. So we have to take off the old tail lights that are non uh, sequential uh, and basically a chrome strip instead of a tail light and put in the tail lights in their place. And then the fourth thing is we have to reassemble everything all together after giving it one uh, test and making sure it works. So those are the four main uh, giant steps we have to do. And so first, let's start with step number one, which is to take apart our new car. Come join me. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here, you see I've removed the luggage board uh, that serves as a shelf in the back of the EV6. And uh, I'm now gonna remove uh, this plate here that covers the uh, woofer, the subwoofer, and then we're going to remove this piece here as well. So uh, this seems pretty easy. I'll put my camera on my tripod and uh, give this a go. Now I think once you take these uh, two clips out by screwing them, uh, you have to just lift straight up, it appears. Let's try this. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, pretty easy so far. All right, next we have to loosen uh, cargo side trim on the left and right sides. You're looking at my left side right now. I'm gonna do first uh, taking out this little shelf thing that's here, and I'm gonna pull out my plug for my dash cam cat battery uh, which was in the 12 volt socket. So let's pull that one out. And then the two bolts you're going to remove apparently are um, this one here, that you can see right here, and then uh, one down below. Looks like there's another bolt or two that holds in the whole panel. You don't have to remove the whole panel, just loosen it in order to uh, gain access and do some stuff behind there of plugging and unplugging uh, harnesses and things. All right, so got the second one out. Now we got to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing in parallel. I'm going to take out this bolt here. All right, so we got these bolts out now. And now we got to do some stuff here to pull this out from what are apparently some clips here. So let's go ahead and try and do that. It says that this might be uh, might take some force. Doesn't seem that bad though. Let's see if this thing's going on to this door, but it certainly looks like I got these these things out without much of a problem. There we go. There's a, another clip there. Might be another clip here or two. But yeah, I might need to take some more of this out in order to get behind here. Although I guess maybe maybe opening this, which I bet we have to do at some point and taking this off too, is gonna help. As right, so I came off pretty easily. Okay, you join me at the rear driver's side door of the car, and we're going to be doing two things here. We're going to be removing this weather stripping at the bottom here, and then we're going to be removing uh, what looks to be a kick plate right here that we're going to need to run the wires underneath of. So first I'm going to remove this, and that came off really super easy. And now I'm going to try and get this thing out with my hands, and it looks like it's metal, but... Oh, it's coming up pretty easy, but it's like there's some strong clips here, so I get a little bit of uh oh. Whoop, did I break that? Ah, we had our first little casualty. I cracked uh, this uh, this scuff plate here. Uh, it's like underneath where people step into the car, so no one's going to know that except for uh, you, me, the internet. So we'll keep that our secret here. You can just see there's a little a little scuff here or a little um, a little crack. So be careful when you take this out not to use too much force because what it did is hit the seat here and as I was pulling it up it cracked. But 
that's fine. Just look. Doesn't look bad at all. All right, you now join me uh, at the driver's side front door. Now we're going to be doing a very similar thing of pulling up this weather, weather stripping and taking off the front scuff panel in the same way, hoping to not do anything to crack that one. We're in front of my past mistakes here. Uh, these, these things here that look like they're a little bit challenging to get out. But, oh yeah, this is better. Got it out there. Okay, cool. So, uh, these came out as well. It looks like I'm, I uh, have a casualty of one of the, two of the metal um, clips actually staying in uh, where, uh, where they clip into, you'll see here, these, these should have come out with this piece and they didn't, but this one came out with it. Uh, hopefully this will go in uh, okay and we won't uh, cause any rattles or anything by these pieces not coming out, but just an FYI, those clips didn't come out. Okay, for the next step, you join me underneath the driver's seat where the pedals are. And to the left of the pedals is the uh, hood or cowl release, they call it. And we're going to take this thing off in order to get this panel that's next to it off. Now, it looks like this thing is held on by these little, these little plastic uh, indentations that hold on this crank. Now, I don't know, I'm using a set of pliers here and I'm trying to push in these little things in order to get this thing off. And that's what you gotta do. Okay, so I used a set of needle nose pliers, you can see them right here, and I just pushed in these, these little things and then this thing came off uh, without much effort. All right. The next part of our adventure is gonna be taking this piece off that's uh, behind the release for the hood. And in order to do that, I think we're gonna pull it out. It has clips on it. Let me see how I get to the clips here. Might need to use a trim removal tool. Oh, no, came out. And then uh, got my got my mat in the way a little bit, but oops, one more, one more, one more thing there. Okay, great, so we got this, and uh, this just kind of came off. All right. Next step brings us back to the back of the car, and um, we're gonna be removing this trim piece and then the other side that we already um, inadvertently took out in the previous step when we loosened those clips. There we go. So you gotta get a screwdriver in here in order to get this out. Trim removal piece uh, didn't work too well. All right, so that one's out and the other side's out now. All right, so it looks like the first one is that there's a connection here. Here we go. So. These are automotive connectors. They have a lot of um, a lot of insulation on them too. So let's just push in this little piece here and then this comes out very easily. On the other side, we gotta do the same thing, but I think there's uh, two connectors here because we have to take out the um, charging door connector as well. So here's one of the connectors that this, the charging door motor. And then here's the other one, which is for the rear lamps there. Okay, so we got those out as well. Now, we're going to remove the rear combination lamp 10 millimeter nuts. Yeah, that is one of the right ones. There's four nuts on the, at least on the right hand side. And let me actually get a camera in here so you can see this. So there's a one, two, three. That looks to be the hardest one and then this one but looks like once you get them started you can take them off by hand so that's what i'm going to do as my strategy here i might actually take there's one more there's one more uh, nut that's behind this this one here and i'm thinking i got to take that one out as well um, because it's going to make it much easier to get to these bolts that we have to take out in order to get So this one's out. Now I think it's going to be easier for me to get this. Oh yeah, much easier. All right, so I'm able to kind of like bend back the trim some more and get get my socket wrench in here. So I definitely recommend taking out that extra that extra bolt. And 
again, my technique was I loosened them with the socket and then was able to kind of just unscrew them by hand. Now on the other side, on the driver side here, let's go to that side, which doesn't have the charging door. And uh, that one appears to have three bolts, one at the bottom here and then two, one on the side and one over here. So ding, ding, ding. So let's get these off as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the bolt behind the seat loose to begin with. That made it a lot easier to get access in here. All right, so let me get the camera in here so you can see what we're what we're doing here. So far, I think this is the most challenging step. One is down here. One is on the side here. And then one is at the top here. And I've loosened all of them with a screwdriver. What I'm going to be doing here is unscrewing these finally by hand uh, inside here now that they're loosened. And these bolts just kind of come off. And you just got to be careful and make sure that you um, catch them when they're coming off the screw and they don't fall down into the bottom of the car. All right. Now, finally, we're going to be taking out the rear lights. And it looks like the way that's done is by first removing these two covers, feeding covers that are over the screws on each side. So they, they just kind of fold down. So first one's folded down. Here comes the second one. Now, again, these are 10, 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm going to stick with my seam. And these also have Phillips head screws in them too. So you can use either a Phillips head or the socket that I'm already using for the tent. Again, got these two little doors that fold down. Open them with the screwdriver. And then two bolts that come out. All right, now comes what I think is the most scary part of this whole thing. We're going to have to take off this entire tail light here. It's the entire part that goes, you know, the whole way down and whole way across. Pretty big piece of bodywork. It's not really just a tail light. It's also a body colored part of plastic as well. And we want to do it without scratching any of the bumper if we can. Now, in order to do that, we have to kind of get the clips going here and get it pushed out without having it fall down and scratch. And you'll see that there is already more of a gap showing here uh, now that the screws are out. So it wants to come out. It's just held in by clips at this point. All right, so we have this, uh, this air pump wedged in here and uh, we are gonna pull out and towards the rear and I am going to uh, first pump this up to get this going here and see what happens. Might need to pull, put down the camera soon. Oh yeah, you can see this is already kind of starting here where it's, it's really coming out. Let me put down the camera here, see if that helps. And keep one hand on this at all times to make sure this doesn't like just fall out and strike. Ah, easy. Trailing wires out. Okay. Done. Got it out. All right, we have this done on the passenger side. Now let's do the driver's side here. And I'm gonna use the, the biggest wedge that I have. I'm gonna use two hands and keep two hands on this thing. You can have these wires that have to come out of the holes uh, that you already un unclipped, but that 
give a little resistance until they come through the hole. Do not let go. Use two hands with this because it is surprisingly a little bit heavy, uh, especially the side, the other side that has the uh, charge port door attached to it. So continuing along and taking off all of these screws that hold this leg together, some of these are in kind of tight places where I can't use my uh, my my powered screwdrivers to get them out. I have to resort to good old Phillips head manual screwdriver. Um, I think I have to take more of these things off in order to get this thing out. And this seems to be not a very well documented. But yeah, it looks like got to get out all the screws at the top and certainly the bottom as well. All right, so let's keep going here. It looks like all these screws are interconnected and basically anything with a screw in it, just got to take it out. All right, so a little problem there is that I took off some of the screws down on the top that seem to mechanically or hold the tail light together um, as a unit, but I don't think you need to take those out in order to get the tail light out. It's a little bit unclear from the instructions which of the screws to take out. So I'm going to put these smaller screws back in because my common sense tells me these aren't part of what you need to, to take off in order to get the whole thing apart. And some good learning here. last screw in here that I erroneously I think took apart which actually takes apart the light module itself I believe. Okay so got that off. Now um, let's get the rest of the screws that seem to hold these, um, these lights onto the middle part. Let's get these things off. Ah, look at that. So I have this piece off. And hopefully I'm going to have this piece come out off too. Oh, careful not to damage anything. There we go. There's a clip on the bottom here. This bottom of the, of the chrome strip that you're going to replace with the with the turn signal. All right, now I'm going to actually modify these instructions slightly because I want to reinstall or reassemble each one of these tail lamps with the new tail lamps or the new turn signals in them and then test them uh, in the car. I don't want to test them with everything kind of disassembled and then have to reassemble it. All right, so we have one of the new fancy turn signal lamps. And here is it in comparison with the dummy that's there now. And you can see it's the same color. It just, uh, if you look very closely, has holes where the LED comes through the chrome. So old one, new one. Okay, so tip number one, before you put in this to fit it and to screw it in, make sure you rip off this big vent cover that seems to fit on here. Now, this seems to be plenty sticky, even without the double-sided tape it had. Um, it's got some grooves that kind of keep it in, but I'm gonna put a small piece of double-sided tape on this that I have to uh, make sure this stays on. All right, so now we got some double-sided tape on this, and I'm gonna put this on, put this on the new, uh, new tail lamp and it fits in the exact same place. Has the same kind of like holes to receive the, the fakeness of this uh, little fake vent. And now I'm gonna get this reassembled and then we'll start um, screwing all this back together. Line up the bottom here with this part and these tabs. 
what's interesting here this oh this part needs to the little so the little the little vent part needs to need to needs to snap into part of the um part of the bodywork as well part of the plastic part that's painted body color in this case red and then this whole side here fits in as well and then this has some some tabs there and now we're going to start screwing things in I think it's easier so I'm going to put in the screws in the bottom there appear to be one two Looks like all right, got it. Slid them all back together here. Now I'm using the other one as kind of a guide on what to do because we need to put this thing on too. An end. This seems to go on there. All right, so we have one together. Looks awesome. Okay, we've got the Passenger side done. Let's do the driver's side. All right, imagine this side's going to be pretty much the same, just in reverse. We're going to first start taking off the right screws or the correct screws. Nope, here we go. All right, so five and the top light comes off. Now let's do the bottom dummy piece here and take that off. So basically there's two more screws that hold in the bottom and then that comes off as well. So here you go. Here's the other side dummy piece. Before you put it on the sequential lamp, you got to take off this fake this fake rubber vent trim piece thing. And then you gotta attach it to, uh, to here. Now I'm gonna take this new sequential lamp and I'm gonna put this rubber piece in here like so with the double-sided tape on there so that we have a nice good seal there. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing situated. And notice that the, the rubber piece has some little taps that fit in to the this body trim piece. So the driver's side is actually a lot easier just because it doesn't have the charge port door. So it's much easier to see what's going on and to, to fit it in. All right, so I'm gonna now uh, screw this back up. This stuff here does not line up properly unless you get, you start at the end and align it properly. So you have to make sure all these tabs here are in, in the right way. And this end clicks in to the new sequential turn piece. All right, now I think we're ready to finally screw this thing up and get it back together. And then start doing the electrical part. All right, got all the screws in. I think we should be good to go here. 
now that we've done a lot of the physical work of putting in the sequential tail lamps and prepping everything, we've got to do the wiring. The wiring seems to have three aspects to it. The first is running a harness from the front of the car underneath where the driver's footwell is uh, back to the back uh, and then connecting that into the tail lamps and running that properly. The second is that you're going to have to, um, or we're going to have to uh, take the signal from the mirror flashing indicators uh, and uh, connect that into the harness that we install. Uh, and you do that through uh, two wiretaps. That's the only physical modification you really have to do to the original car. And then the third thing we have to do is make the connectors uh, to the sequential tail lamps. And those come um, not completely made into a connector because you have to wire it through the grommet um, that goes from the tail lamps uh, to the back. So that's the third thing we have to do. So let's go first and run the harness from the front under the uh, driver's uh, feet uh, through to the back tail lamps uh, itself. All right, so let's talk about this harness itself. The harness has uh, kind of two sides. The first side here has one connector on it. That's how you can tell the difference. And this is going to be under the driver's footwell, and it's going to connect into the uh, signals you're taking from the um, mirrors. Okay, the second part of the connector is what's going in the back. And in the back, there's a set of three connectors. One of the three connectors uh, goes to the trailer hitch, uh, if you have it. I don't, so I'm not going to connect that up. Uh, and then the other two are what's going to be going to the taillights on each side. So this is uh, one side, and then you'll see they have a, uh, an analogous one on the other side as well. So we're going to be connecting this in uh, to the existing connector for the brake light. And for the turn signal, uh, we have another uh, little um, kind of connector we're going to have to make up uh, with the parts that are given to us. Okay, so with that in mind, let's install this wiring harness into the car. All right, so this wasn't as like plug and play as I thought it would be to get this uh, harness uh, wired up from the front to the back, but let me show you what I had to do in order to get this in a good state. I started from the back. The back is where you need to start from because it's got the smallest width of the connector. It's only got one connector on the front. Uh, so you want to start in the back and get those things in place. So the end of the um, pole harness is uh, here on the right-hand side. And so these are going to be the connectors you're going to need uh, for the right-hand taillight and new turn signal. Uh, so I wired that in. I put it underneath the, uh, the panel that uh, we made uh, able to be lifted up. So I snake that around underneath uh, through this panel here that's going to be uh, put back on and through to this side on the uh, driver's side. Now for this one, I had to not only have it loose where it was, but I actually did pull out uh, more, of the, uh, more of the panel here. It didn't have any other screws, um, but I made it so that this was loose. This let me get the wiring all behind this panel. And I'm gonna, um, you know, when I'm ready to button this whole thing up, I'm gonna zip tie things through there. Uh, hopefully I can zip tie this cable underneath so it doesn't rattle, but I have it go running through here, and again, this is the cable running to the front, and I was able to snake it through, and then I'll show you what I was able to do is to pick it up on the side of uh, underneath this panel over here. So I was able to get it down underneath here and uh, loosen this, uh, take out this uh, fastener as well. So I was able to lift this whole panel up in a way that allowed me to uh, get this, uh, this thing underneath it. So here's the cable, here's the harness for the new lighting, and that's going underneath this kick panel that we're gonna put back on. I was messing around with whether or not to take out the door sill to get it underneath. I decided it really wasn't that important to my life and uh, that I had 3D mats that cover up this wire anyway. 
and I thought it was better to just like leave it going outside here. No one ever looks at this. So, oh, by the way, have to take down this seat. So if you have a child seat in here like I did, I had to take that out. All right, so now the wire's going to the front and you'll see the wires here, the harness is here and this is gonna be zip tied here. And uh, then it goes right to uh, the place it needs to be. So um, that's the way that I went and uh, went about uh, snaking this harness uh, through to, from the front all the way to the back and having all the all of the connectors in the right places. So I'm gonna zip tie this down as the last task that I have. But what's next is I need to make the, uh, the additional wiring connections, uh, both in the front uh, to grab the turn signal uh, in a clear way uh, of what goes to each mirror. And in the back, we're gonna have to make a new connector that's gonna go snaking through the grommet uh, for each one of the lights to weatherproof it properly and make the connector itself for each turn signal. So first, let's do the scary part, which is making sure we get the right wires off of the harness in the car and doing a quick tap to each one of those. Okay, so what I did here is I pulled off the plastic fuse box uh, cover and then I pushed together with this black thing the little connector that was there. You could see where my fingers were. Pushed that off and then that allowed uh, this to release and for this connector to come down. Now this is going to the ICU uh, junction block, I believe. So the ICU is behind this. And what we're going to be doing here is uh, taking off this uh, automotive felt tape and then finding the correct wires. We need wire uh, that goes into pin 11 and pin 44. And then we're going to be tapping into both of those wires. Those are the wires that go to each one of your mirrors and give you a turn signal for the mirror. And those are the wires that we're going to tap into in order to provide the connection to the back for the sequential uh, turn signals to work. Now we're going to start uh, doing the taps and we're tapping the wires to this this harness here which they give you and this is going to take the signals and then put it in uh, a connector that we're going to connect into this harness that we routed from the back. All right so after doing that little surgery there here's how it looks. I have the yellow tapped into number 11 and the green tapped into number 44. Last thing to do is to take the connector from the wiring in the car and plug it into our harness. And so I'm gonna snap this in. You see it fits perfectly with the connector we wired up. All right, with uh, that wiring done in the front, let's go to the back of the car where we're gonna be wiring up uh, the new sequential turn signal connectors uh, from the lamps themselves and connecting them into this harness. Uh, they're in a, uh, a dis, uh, totally partially uh, completed state right now. Uh, it's how they're shipped to you uh, because they want you to uh, put them through the grommets that exist in the car for the wiring uh, so that um, you maintain the uh, weather protection that all the grommets and weather protection has in the car uh, to make it automotive grade. So let's go to the back of the car and I think that's almost our last step before trying this, uh, this thing out and hopefully closing it up. All right, now, here's the other harness part that we gotta do here. This is my driver's side uh, rear, rear tear lamp. You'll see that the harness they gave uh, fits in with the new sequential turn signal just perfectly. So what we gotta do here is this other side has to be put onto this uh, connector. And we know the pins that go into here, but before you do that, um, 
we're told to wire this wire to this grommet here. This grommet keeps rain and schmutz from the outside world from getting inside the back of the car. Now, there's no instructions here on how to get the wires through this grommet. So I'm going to try and figure out how to remove this grommet in some way so that I can get this wire and this harness through here so that it fits in the hole and seals up still. All right, now we have to do is take the connector here, uh, take these wires or these pins and connect them in the right way to this connector. All right, and here's how this looks with it. The plug's in the right place yellow, white, blue, and then the bottom row has black, and then two that are plugged up so you don't use them. Uh, apparently it's super critical to make sure you do this right, otherwise you mess up the turn signals. All right, very excited here. I got everything um, all done, and I'm ready to uh, test this out. Here is the original wiring from the car. This has brake lights and turn signals and I'm splitting off splitting that off and uh, uh, plugging part of the harness into that and then the other two that have come off of here are the ones that are going to go to the turn signals so brake lights will be happy and then also the turn signal functionality will be separated and taken from this and brake lights won't go on or serve as turn signals uh, with this harness in so let's do this we're going to plug these two into here. So let's put the first one in. And then we're going to put the second one in here. All right. Now we should have the brake lights and the turn signals uh, connected up properly and they should all be happy where brake lights are only going to turn on when brake lights turn on and certain signals only turn on when they turn on. So let's check this out. Hey guys, it's actually the next day and I wanted to let you know what happened at the end. I couldn't film the very end, but I put everything in. I was in a rush because it was towards the end of the day and I needed to get uh, to drive somewhere with my car. So I put in everything and uh, tried uh, to get it to work and found out that it did not work. Neither side uh, worked properly and it gave all the symptoms of the wiring not being proper at the uh, driver's footwell where you take the, uh, the signals uh, to the mirrors. So uh, after a back and forth with Kyle, I figured out that I made two mistakes. The first was I absolutely totally tapped into the wrong wires. Now, I've made sure in this video that I'm clear where the wires are, uh, what I did wrong, and kind of where you should actually be going to pull the wires. So that's, I think, one of the most uh, tricky and uh, challenging aspects of this because you're underneath the footwell of the car. You've been uh, sweating in my case or in anyone's case, uh, doing a lot of things that um, are maybe outside your comfort zone of taking out like literally a lot of the back of the car and all the trim pieces and running this wire and all these other uh, things. And uh, you have to get that right, obviously. And you're, you're screwing around with like the wiring in your car. So you have to make sure you uh, tap the right ones. Anyway, fortunately, I was able to find my error. I basically just cut the new harness out of the wire taps that uh, were in there in the wrong wires. I purchased some new wire taps in an auto parts store uh, the next morning, this morning, and I put those in the car, uh, made sure I put them in the right places, um, and uh, that was my mistake number one. Mistake number two, and it might have been a minor one, the driver's side tail lamp that you're putting in, the tail lamp assembly, where there's a, a trailer hitch connector. Uh, it's white, and it's there unused in most cars that don't, uh, in all cars, that don't have the trailer hitch package uh, from Kia. So uh, you actually are going to use that. On the harness, you'll see that there is a white, uh, two white connectors. 
one of those connectors, I think the male part, is going to stick into that trailer hitch connector from the car. And that provides ground, uh, I believe, and some power uh, to the tail lamps or to the sequential tail lamps themselves. Okay, one more thing I wanted to uh, mention is while I was in there and the whole back of my car is off, you'll see it's very easy to get at these uh, little flap vents uh, that Kia has in the back on both sides underneath where those tail lamp assemblies are. Those rattle at speed. So if you have a rattle in your car, and I think almost every EV6 does uh, at this point, it's generally uh, from those little flaps that rattle uh, very easily and they're very noisy. So what I did is while I was there, I put some furniture felt uh, in there and I also taped them in a way that won't move very much. And when they do move, they won't rattle. So I took care of that at the same time and made it very easy to get at them because you have the lights out so you can get at them from the outside. So I just wanted to mention that that's another benefit of opening up and doing all this work is that um, you're able to take care of that at the same time. All right, with that being said, after wiring things up the right way and plugging in the ground properly to get power to the sequential tail lamps, I have it working. All right, so let me demonstrate to you the finished product. Now, uh, the stock EV6 in the United States has one of those brake lights, depending on which indicator you want to use, also doing double duty as the turn signal. With the sequential turn signals, let me show you what it changes to. That's me turning on my left turn signal. And you'll see the indicators in the back now have a configuration where they go sequentially. They're amber, and they're a separate element from the brake light. So here, here's the left turn signal, and here's me braking at the same time. So this is my foot on the brake pedal, but regen is the same. You'll see that it's safer and really telegraphs to those behind you what your intentions are. All right, let's look at the right turn signal. There's the right turn signal, and similarly, if I'm turning right, it'll uh, have the sequential turn signal that's amber turning on now, and you'll also see those are the brake lights. I think these look incredibly unique and uh, fantastically cool. Uh, and at the same time are, are safer than the EV6 uh, is when it ships in the United States now. Here's one last thing I want to show you. Uh, the guy that made this uh, fantastic uh, harness, Kyle, um, also put in a PCB board uh, that mimics the logic of the and the behavior of these turn signals uh, in other countries around the world. If um, you are uh, locking or unlocking the car or if you are using your hazards, it does not uh, fire the lights sequentially and instead has them uh, blinking on and off. And I think that's for maximum visibility uh, in those emergency situations. And here is the lights with my hazards on and you'll see they blink on and off without being sequential. One more thing I wanted to mention, this was not cheap, right? This was not only uh, like a pretty interesting adventure uh, in taking my car apart and getting it back together, but it also cost about $800 all in with the harness and with the uh, lights that I bought off of eBay that shipped from Korea directly. So not cheap, but definitely a really cool project for your car. So what do you think of these lights? Do you have uh, questions, comments? Are you stuck putting these in yourself? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video.